there are different kinds of solar power. There's solar electricity, there is solar thermal. And that's why I'm here with Zach Axelrod, who's the founder and CEO of Skyline Innovations, a project developer for solar thermal installations. So here we are talking about solar electricity, solar thermal. What's the difference? Right. Uh, solar thermal is actually quite simple. It's just taking the sun's energy and using that heat uh, to do either domestic water heating applications or industrial process heating applications. Solar electric again takes the sun's energy, converts it into electricity. Uh, not quite as efficient, but many more applications. So we've decided to take the approach of taking that more narrow, narrowly used technology of thermal, um, but it is quite efficient to do things like heat domestic hot water um, and for things like laundromats and car washes, etc. So it's essentially for, for heating water? Absolutely. But you're talking about heating a whole building? Uh, we heat about 70% of the uh, uh, annual needs of a building. Um, we try to size the system to meet about 100% of the summer need. And then, of course, in the winter we provide a little less. But the, the building's existing water heater remains and acts as a backup facility. And our model is to sell the heat from this uh, installation at a cheaper price uh, than, the, than the underlying gas fuel uh, that, that fires their traditional water heater. Right, I have a, a traditional gas water heater. Right. What would be the price difference? You're talking about savings. What would be the cost difference for me as a tenant who has gas water heating versus something like this? We offer a fixed percentage discount. Um, instead of a traditional uh, fixed price power purchase agreement, we have kind of a unique variable price offering. And we simply charge, uh, uh, let's say, 15 to, to 30 percent less for that fuel um, than, than would uh, the gas utility. And it's only for the heat that we deliver from our system, and therefore we have every incentive to make sure the system performs, because if it doesn't, then the tenants, then the apartment building owner don't pay. So this is really a, a price difference between what the sun's renewable energy provides versus gas itself. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is expensive equipment to put up, but then our fuel is, is free on an ongoing basis. Um, so we finance the system and we just simply sell the output as it's delivered. In general, if a homeowner were to do this, would that homeowner save on their heating bills or their water heating bills as well? They would. Uh, residential systems, just like with solar electric, are a little more expensive to install on a, a per unit basis. Um, but then again, once the system's installed, your, your uh, cost of fuel is now free. Um, we've focused traditionally on uh, commercial systems, um, but solar hot water is far more prevalent uh, in residential applications in the United States. In fact, it's, it's quite popular on a, on a residential basis. In terms of cost savings, what about incentives? Uh, you're, you're, the incentive for you is to provide the energy to folks here in this building, as right. you said, and by pricing it properly. What about incentives for the building owner to put something like this up? Right. So our model is actually that we own and operate the equipment and we capture the incentives that are delivered, which in certain markets are, are somewhat generous. Um, there's federal tax credits. Uh, in certain markets like Washington, D.C. And, and a lot of the Mid-Atlantic, there are solar renewable energy credits. Uh, and so in building the system, we charge the facility for the fuel. And in addition, we monetize those credits. Um, if the building owner were to put the system up themselves, they would again have access to those same tax advantages and, and local credits as well, which in some markets, again, like Washington, D.C., can, can be fairly generous. Well, you told me earlier that you also have done some installations or some project development in Pennsylvania. Where does the home and apartment building owner look? Do they look specifically at the state energy department, their local utilities? Where do they look for these kinds of tax incentives? Uh, there's a wonderful national database called Desire. Uh, and Desire tracks all of the different federal, state, and local, and utility programs. Uh, and in fact, if you can go onto the Desire website, it's very, very simple to find those incentive structures for your location, and then specifically contact the program administrators. All that contact information is published. So we and, and all other developers are very fortunate to have that national database, which is provided as a, as a free public service. In terms of cost for an installation, what generally would be uh, a major uh, apartment building? What would be the cost of installation? Uh, large apartment buildings are probably somewhere in the fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range, depending on the size. Um, I know that's a, a fairly broad range. Um, the systems that you're looking at here are, are 
kind of in the, the $150,000 range collectively. So uh, they're fairly expensive, um, but again, with the different incentives and with the efficiency of these systems, they actually offset a significant amount of fuel usage each year. And the, the fundamental economics of these systems are, are, are pretty good, actually. When do they pay back, as it were? Sure. Uh, without incentives, these systems are probably in the, the 10 to 15 year, 15 year range right now with gas prices as low as they are. Um, and with, in, uh, with incentives, you know, you're at a, a significantly lower number, you know, probably somewhere in the five year range. So for a 25 year asset, that's, that's pretty good. I'm just curious, one last question, and, and that is why did you go to solar thermal as opposed to solar electricity, which is more popular? Right. No, that's a terrific question. Uh, worldwide, solar thermal is about 10 times as widely used as solar electric. But in the United States, it's the opposite. Uh, solar electric is very, very sexy. Uh, it's magic. You create electricity, and we love it. Um, but there are a significant number of, of developers and installers in that field, and we saw a nice niche uh, in the United States with an underutilized technology. Um, and our backgrounds from on our Skyline Innovations team are in asset monitoring and optimization. And solar thermal is more difficult because you have a closed system. There's no grid to push excess power back to. You do have to optimize with storage. Um, that's our background. So we, we chose to, to basically take on a technology. While we love solar electric, we chose to take on that other solar technology uh, that, that has far less kind of presence here in the U.S. and try and build that out. Well, good luck with you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.